So here we go, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Meet the Oppo series, the show where I get the lowdown on town's next opponent, which is Derby County at Pride Park in League One. It's getting to the business end of the season. I'm joined by Jake Barker, the man from the Rams Talk podcast, Derby County, the mighty Rams. Jake, it's great to have you back on. How's things? <laughs> I'm, I'm very good, thank you, Ross. How are you, mate? I'm very well excited. Um, we didn't have a game <laughs> on Saturday, um, so it was a very weird week, you know, weekend of no game. So I'm pumped for this one, and I'm sure <laughs> W fans are pumped as well. Um, sixth in League One, Jake. Um, last time we met was back in October, a one nil town win. So our town fans were happy, but after that, Jake, 15 games unbeaten run after that defeat. Um, quickly recap on that before we get on to the last few months. It was quite strange, to be honest, because uh, it, that game, Curtis Davis obviously made the mistake that led to your goal. Uh, and he also picked up an injury that game. Um, and he dropped out the side and we brought Craig Forsyth, who's played at left back for us for a decade now. Uh, we brought him in at centre half because we had no one else. All our other defenders were injured. And him and Erin Cashin built up an instant partnership. And we just looked unbeatable for, for what, what, 15 games. And we were beating teams. We, we, uh, you know, the best win I think we had was Bolton at home. Um, we played them off the park for the majority of the game. We looked brilliant. Um, the team just sort of clicked. I think that defeat against you guys kind of it gave us the motivation to really fight. Um, we had so many players playing out of position, and yet it just worked. We had a back four, which was an attacking mid at left back, a left back at centre back, an actual centre back at centre back and a centre mid at right back. And yet, for some reason, no team could break us down. And yeah, it was an extraordinary run and I'm just gutted that it's ended. (laughs) Yeah, I want to get this sort of current mood um, with Derby fans because the last few months, you know, it's not been been that great, has it? Um, I think just one win the last five and I think three defeats in that run. Um, Two nil defeat last time out against Peterborough. So, Still in the playoffs, but yeah, recap the last few months. It sort of all started in a cup game against West Ham and Max Bird, who's probably our best midfielder, got injured. Uh, He pulled his groin and we ended up losing him. He only came back two games ago um, and that made an instant difference. Uh, we have a tiny little squad. Um, anyone that's looked at Derby's team will know we've probably got 14, 15 players that are good enough for the first team. Um, we only had four players in the summer, so we've had to bring in a whole team. We haven't been able to spend any money. We've got a wage cap on players we can bring in. Um, and so attracting players of any sort of quality is, has been difficult. And over the season we've sort of struggled we had you know we had different players hitting form throughout that amazing unbeaten run but now players are losing form we've got no one to bring in uh to replace them and and we found it quite tough to sort of get out of this hole i think since that run ended or towards the end of that run we, we've won like four in 14 or something like that which you know considering the form we were in before is is really poor and uh, i don't know if anyone listening watched the the peterborough game um it, it's the same for every game at the minute. First half, we're really good. We keep the ball really well, but we just can't get it in the back of the net. And then second half, teams always make changes. We don't adapt. We don't change and we lose. And that seems to be happening week after week. So it's been a, a quick turnaround in fortunes. I think the the mood around the supporters isn't great at the minute. I think there's real concern we'll drop out of the playoffs, but we know that if we can get a couple of good results in a row, there's always a chance. And I think a lot of fans are looking at this game as a, a potential chance to turn it around, despite your really, really good recent form. Yeah. Um, Paul Warren then, Jake, um, who I think was maybe in the job about a month when, when we faced off. Um, since then, you know, went on that great run. But as you said, the last few months not been great. What, what's, what's everyone thinking about Paul, Paul at the moment? And Paul's got a great record against town. Um, so I'm sure he'll be well up for this. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. Um, it's interesting with Warren because he seemed to be getting everything bang on. When we're on that run, you, you know what it's like when you're on one of those ridiculous runs and every change seems to work. We were making subs and the subs were changing games and winning games. And in in recent weeks, it's been more difficult. Uh, I think a couple of times, you know, his, his team selection, it has been wrong. And Thankfully, you know, he's admitted that he's come out and said, you know, I've, I've got it wrong. I shouldn't have played these players. It's just getting the players to click again. 
Um, we've changed the way we play a little bit. We played a lot through the middle. Um, when Bird got injured, we started playing a lot of longer balls, looking for diagonals. Um, and teams have sort of they've worked us out. They've put two players on both wide players, and all of a sudden we're nullified. Um, but the thing is with Warren, as you've said, he's a successful manager in this division. And you've got to hope that he and his coaching staff can work with the team and, and change them and develop them. Um, last time out against Peterborough, we played Harvey White in an advanced role. We hadn't seen him play there before and he played quite well. So you've got to hope that he can use the players at his disposal and manage to turn things around. Yeah. Um, and let's talk about the players then, Jake, um, because um, even though you said you've got a small squad, you've got some good players still um, for this level. Um, this is the last 11 against Peterborough, um, as we mentioned in, in that defeat. Any changes from that, do you reckon? And yeah, name drops and players. Dave McGordrick, of course, did see <sighs> the man um, who's been scoring the goals for you this campaign, a player that town fans like, uh, had injuries with us, but 18 goals this season, doing pretty well. He has stood well, yeah. Three hat tricks as well, which is, uh, yeah, some achievement. But, you know, the, the last hat trick he got was, I think, against Morecambe. And that was just as Max Bird picked up that injury and his goals have dried up and everyone's goals have dried up. You know, if we'd had this conversation a month ago, I'd have been like, you know, Mendes Lang, he's unstoppable. He's got something like 14 goal involvements. hurrahan has got about 16. McGoldrick's got like 20 something. But in, in recent weeks, it's been tough. Um, I think, yeah, I, I, changes wise, I think the back four will be the same. Um, in front of them, I don't know. Max Bird will start, Conor Hurrahan will start. Um, Mendes Lang or Dobbin, you know, we've got Barkays and Tony Springer that are waiting. And Warren has hinted that he might play two up front. Um, we've looked a little bit open when we've played two up front, which I'm sure is news you'll like to hear. Um, but James Collins, would, you know, could potentially partner McGoldrick up front. But we're a little bit stuck on options, to be honest. We've probably got one midfielder we could bring in to change that in Louis Sibley. We've got two wingers and a striker to bring in and pretty much nobody else. So, you know, with with Derby, what you see in the starting eleven is pretty much what you'll get. Um, but yeah, I think I think you'll probably see something like that. Yeah, I want, I want to mention one player that really impressed me in the game um, at Porton Road, and that was Cashin um, mm. at the back there. I think he's having a great season, isn't he? And he's a player I'm sure is destined for good things. Um, he's definitely a player we should look out for again. I'm sure. Yeah, he is. He, I think he's still statistically the best rated player on who scored for League One at the minute with a seven point four average and. Cashin, he's such a good player. You know, I know it probably doesn't do him justice. I think it's his first full season in football. He probably played nine or ten games last season. He only made his debut about a year ago. Um, and he just plays with such maturity. Um, he's won more aerial duels despite only being about six foot, which, you know, isn't massive for a centre-half than than any other player in League One. And He's, he's comfortable on the ball as well. Um, I think he's it's been a symptom of our recent form that he's sort of had a little bit of a wobble. I don't think he's had his strongest few weeks, but he always seems to step up in the bigger games and the bigger occasions. And yeah, I think myself and Derby fans will be hoping he can he can step up and he's definitely better when he's got Forsyth next to him. I think when Curtis Davis plays, Cashin sort of loses a little bit of that confidence. Yeah, we shall wait and see then. He's definitely a player I'm looking out for and I'm looking forward to seeing him play. Hopefully he doesn't play too well because, yeah, town fans <laughs> won't want to see that. Um, well, Jake, how are you feeling then going into this one? It's a big game for both sides um, as we get to the final stretch of the season. What do you reckon? Pride Park, big crowd, going to be exciting? To be honest, I'd be lying if I said I was confident. Uh, our record against top teams is pretty abysmal. Um, since Paul Warren took over as manager, we've beaten one team in the top six in the league, um, which is funny because we beat three when Rossini was manager, but we were so much worse. So it's, it's baffling. Um, but yeah, we've only beat one and that was Bolton. Uh, we beat them 2-1 at home. You know, we, we always seem to struggle. I know, obviously, I said Cashin steps up, but a lot of the players seem to struggle. I think better teams shut down our wide areas quite well. Um, and that's something that we really struggle to deal with. So, yeah, I'm not massively confident. I think uh, on, on our part, I said one all. Uh, and we usually predict us to win every week. So you can tell, yeah, we're, we're not feeling too optimistic. Um, but, yeah, I, I think I, I'd really hope for a draw, but I think it's going to be a tough game. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think it's going to be... I'm looking forward to this one because we haven't been to Pro Park for a while and, you know, it's going to be two big dogs of League One going head-to-head -head at a big stadium. You know, what, what's the home form been like, Jake, 
um, at Pride Park. I think I've seen, I've got 12 wins, four draws, three defeats. Mm. Um, this is going to be a tough game for town. I think they're not going to go into this game underestimating Derby despite the recent form. Um, but yeah, do you play any different at home to away games? Definitely. Yeah, we're so much better at home. Um, we usually play better on bigger pitches, expansive football. You've got the likes of Bird, Horahan pulling the strings in the middle. and Jason Knight will be back from international duty as well. So, you know, we're really good at exploiting the space. Um, Fleetwood shut us down quite well, beat us 2-0 a couple of weeks ago, uh, which was our first home defeat in 2023, our first home defeat in ages. Um, we lost two at the start of the season pretty much and then won pretty much every one since. Um, so yeah, we, we, we tend to be so much better at home than away from home. Um, but again, we've had a wobble in recent weeks, so it all depends which Derby turns up. Yeah. I think that's what all town fans were worrying about, um, for the game at Portland road, which Derby team are going to turn up. Mm. And, uh, we finally sort of beat a team in the top half of the table. Cause that's normally our record in league one is never great. Um, but we've been able to get a big win at Bolton the other week. Mm. Um, so this will be another sort of tick off the list in terms of what's your feelings about the playoffs then because it's definitely a full half race now for the top two um with you know Barnsley losing recently and when we're recording this on Wednesday we don't know the chat on them Sheffield Wednesday result but um you guys are still fighting for that maybe sixth to fifth spot what do you reckon yeah I think it's gonna be crazy I mean you look at the six teams that are in the playoffs it's mad that only three of them are going to go up you know, there's, there's, I, I think all six would probably survive quite comfortably in the championship next season, and that's saying something. Um, so yeah, I, I, to be honest, I think for us, it's all about getting that sixth position. Um, I, I can't see us getting any higher. I think fifth is a pipe dream in itself. Um, I know Bolton aren't obviously on the best run of form themselves, but. Yeah, just about solidifying in that playoffs, get ourselves in there. Everyone knows it's a lottery and anything could happen. But then we can't be too disappointed if we go out and, you know, we've had a good season. We, we haven't spent anything. We couldn't sign anyone. You know, all our players are either loans or free transfers and they're all about 35 years old. So it's something to be proud of. But above us, I mean, you guys, what, Plymouth, Chef Wednesday, Barnsley look unbelievable. I mean, they didn't somehow last night, but they, they've looked unbelievable so far. They, they played us off the park when we went to them. They're the best team I've seen us play all season, um, despite the fact that we battered them the two times we played them before, which is even weirder. Uh, we've beaten 3-0 in the FA Cup. I don't think they had a shot. And we go to their place and they hammer us 4-1. So, yeah, I think it's going to be really tight. To be honest, I think you're probably... The fact that you rare. I think you've only lost four games or something like that. This yeah. is something ridiculous. I think the fact that you don't seem to lose games will play massively in your favour. Um, I hope you go up. I, I really do. Um, as long as it's not at our expense. Yes. Yes, my friend. <laughs> um, uh, sort of final notes, final um, any other business, my friend, in terms of um, maybe some town fans may go into their first game at Pride Park um, or they haven't been for a while. Has there been any changes since we last went? Because last time we both played at Pride Park was in the championship. Since mm. then, lots happened. Yeah, well, the new owners cleaned it, so it, it looks a lot nicer than it did before. Mel Morris wasn't a fan of putting any money in. So, yeah, it's nice and clean now, which is good. Um, so you'll enjoy that. Um, to be honest, nothing's really changed. It, it's very similar. We've still got the, the fans' tent. Um, and, yeah, I think a lot more people go and drink in the, the city centre than they used to. I think, yeah, if you, if you want to get a drink before the game, get yourself in the city centre and it's like a 10, 15 minute walk to the ground. Um, but apart from that, I don't think anything's changed since you were last year. OK, then. Well, yeah. Well, if you go and enjoy it, if you're not, cover the um, game of us. Um, of course, we'll be bringing you all different content. Uh, but Jake, anything else from yourself? Anything else you want to mention? Oh, nothing at all. Just looking forward to the game, Ross. Cannot wait. Yes, me too, my friend. Looking forward to it. Um, thanks again for joining me, Jake. Thanks again for everyone for watching another Meet the Oppo. Bring it on this weekend. Bye-bye for now.